Well, today I felt a little bit nostalgic during this uh, coronavirus quarantine, and I thought, well, you know what? I'll do a photo shoot with myself uh, in isolation uh, with my trusty Canon T3i, and I had this. This was my main camera from like 2011, I believe, uh, maybe early 2012, to uh, basically, I guess it was like 18, 2018, I think. Uh, no, 16, I think, something like that. Um, so a good four or five years, I used this thing a lot. Took a ton of photos. Uh, one of the selling points for, for me was that it shoots video, and I could had this nice little screen that I can put in front of me, and that way I can see it. Um, for a lot of years, I just used this kit lens that I got with it until I really learned a whole lot more about lenses. And um, So this is the 18 to 55. It's a 3.5 to 5.6, I believe. Um, yeah. Um, aperture so it's not a very fast lens in comparison um, but uh, I took a lot of photos a day and uh, shot a little bit of video with it as well because for a lot of the video I did I just used the built-in audio and it's got really close to the microphone because with the 18 um, millimeter lens even though it's a crop vector of point, uh, 1.6 um, you can still do a lot, of, a lot of things with it so this is I, w I would try this forever as the the best camera ever made by mankind for filmmaking for, for photography it shoots in raw, um, and um, basically, let me throw up a couple of stats up here real quick, and then we can kind of go over what we're looking at. So uh, basically, it's known as a 60D uh, in America. It's used as a T3i, uh, uh, 18 megapixel uh, on a crop sensor, uh, APS-C crop sensor. Uh, she's at full 1080p, but that was a big selling point, point for me. At 24 frames, that was the biggest sell point there. Um, apparently, you can do 60 frames at 720, but I'm not going to shoot at 720. If I can shoot at 1080p, right? Um, has a digital, digital zoom. I didn't even know it had that. I never did use that at all. Um, and uh, the, the Digi it 4 image processor, a 3-inch, very angle... Uh, articulating screen, which is, like I said, it was really useful for me. Um, has a has a has a speed light on it, um, you know, so I could take a use the flash if I want to with it. Um, the ISO uh, 100 to 100 to 6400. Uh, really, honestly, I, I never really shot past 800 unless I had to. Um, really under. I really like shooting at 100 ISO, to be honest, most of the time. And uh, forever I shot with JPEG and RAW at the same time. Now I'll just shoot with RAW because I'm going to edit it anyways. And um, so um, basically, um, really good camera. I, I used it for a lot of years and loved it. And shot a lot of photos with this kit lens here. And mainly because I didn't have any. I had, well, I had a 55 to, two, to 200 or 55 to 300 uh, lens that I got in the, as a kit here. I think this was about 800 bucks when I bought this and this kit here and uh, something like that. And uh, so uh, just for fun, I'll share with you. Um, let's just look at how uh, some of these photos that I took today uh, look like. And um, so basically I'm, I'm in a light room here. And uh, one thing that I actually really like is these little uh, ones here. Let me get to develop real quick. And um, I can kind of scroll through the photos relatively quick. Uh, that it has this ability for me to put on, uh, shoots 10 shots at one time. And so th that's how I can get these jump shots. Um, and even though I'm shooting in raw, like the first four or five of them go pretty quickly. So if I'm in the air, uh, when that happens, I can get a couple of good air shots. And so that's how I used to get the shots. Uh, the Canon 80D that I use now for, my, for one of the main cameras and the, and the Canon Mark, the 5D Mark II, which I love, uh, d are, don't do this. So uh, it's kind of fun to kind of experiment around with that. So that was kind of fun to do that. So even these are not uh, edited at all. These are just photos straight out of the camera right now. It's kind of fun to see all this, see all the photos I've taken. I'm going to go by pretty quick. And, uh, you know, even at 5.6, yeah, that's 5.6 there. You can see how uh, it's kind of out here is blurred out a little bit. Not a bad photo. Let's just for fun, I'll, uh, I'll edit this one just a little bit. 
kind of get my got some presets on here already. Okay, oh, maybe maybe there's two that I want. Okay, so not bad, not bad. And you see it uh, without the see the difference when I fix the profile corrections and stuff like that. Not bad. Maybe just let's do that auto a little bit and kind of tweak it a little bit. All right, let's save that out. So that's not a bad little photo there. Um, and again, when, when you shoot in RAW, you have a lot more options you can play around with. So there we go. Not bad. And then do that. I have a little bit of vignette on there just because I like the thing that looks a little bit better. So it's not bad, you know, not a bad camera. Uh, when I first got this camera, I didn't know anything about Lightroom. I barely knew anything about Photoshop. Um, as the years got, was the years, I don't know what happened there. That's weird. I don't know, maybe this camera's showing some, some, there's a couple of misfires there. I don't know what, that's interesting. So let's just see if I can do something with that one there. Not bad, not bad, just with my little preset that I have here. Uh... I mean, that's a cool, that's a cool looking photo there. You know, it's a 5.6, um, 18 millimeters, you know, looks pretty cool actually. So save that. So a lot, a lot of times you get folks that, you know, oh, I got to have the best camera or got to be full frame. Can't you have crop sensor, uh, all that stuff going on? Well, Yeah. Let's see. Let me. I'll, I'll do. I'll edit that one again. Let me try the that one there a little bit. Uh, let's play around with. Um, that's kind of how it. What is as shot? Do that. Once again, not a bad photo. Not a bad photo. And a lot. Of, really, what this shows to me, it's not the camera so much as the person. That's the photographer that has experience taking photos and whatnot. I don't know what happened there. So let's see. It looks a little soft. It's not bad. The fire hydrant is definitely in focus there. And it's a little soft, but it's, it's what is it? Oh, yeah. It's 5.6, though. It's passable. Let's see what we can do with that. And, uh. Let's just have that as shot. That's kind of that's kind of cool. Tell you what, we'll make a new preset out of that. Make sure it got the. Yeah, it looks cool. All right. So we got the T3I preset in there, and that looks good. So it's kind of cool to go through here and see what the T3I is able to do. Some of those shots are good. That's a little out of focus there. You can tell that looks a little soft. Yeah, it's soft, soft. All those ones there. I think that's when I had it on, on a tinge. Yeah, I, that's. When I was experimenting with that 10 um, photos at one point, and it's a little soft. It's not horrible, but it is a, it is a little soft. Let's see if I can see anything that screams out to me. Yeah, it's really soft there. So that was kind of fun to do some of those experiments like that to see. And I could fix that with a little bit of sharpness. That looks better. Yeah, that's a lot more. Let's do something with that one there. Get rid of the car. Well. I wish that van wasn't moving. Oh well. All 
All right, I'll just go with that one there. That's kind of a nice magical one. Kabam. Looks pretty cool. You know, and then, of course, you can go throw in some other effects in there if you wanted to. I try not to... They have, they have a lot of, like, you know, heavy processing. Some of their, you know... Got some sharpening they can do as well on there. But I, I usually... So you can do a lot of cool oh, options. Even though this is a little kit lens and whatnot, you can go out there and do some cool stuff. Let me see if I can get at least a little more photo out of this. Let's use that one. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And I'm not an expert at Lightroom, but it's kind of fun. So I'm actually a little concerned at some of these. I don't know if it, maybe it's the speed of the card, because I had no idea that they, I'm, I'm firing some uh, blanks now with the T3i, which is upsetting. But I think this was this was definitely with that one where I, where I shot ten photos at one time. So that might be the thing is that this can't uh, the card may not be fast enough to be able to read it. So even though this is kind of blown out here in the background, um, I think we can fix that a little bit if we wanted to. Pull the contrast up a little. It's not bad. Not a, not don't like my hair in that one, but that's interesting. And uh, even at five six, there, it's not a horrible photo there. I mean, look at that; it's pretty sharp as a tack. And you get that nice little blur a little bit there. Uh, again, you know, when we first started doing photography to know a lot of these things. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. Fortunately, I don't worry about fixing blemishes. Not, not bad. Not bad. So, once again, if you shoot in raw, you get a couple of more stops of uh, various things in there and you look at this one here you know look at that look how and this is what is this one here yeah this is five six and look at that background there you know and, and i'm zoomed in at 55 so notice when i hit uh that there that looks pretty good it looks pretty natural It was a little soft on that one. The sun came out for a little bit. And I thought, well, let me go out there and see if I can grab a couple of shots with the sun a little, little bit. It was an overcast day. That looks, that looks actually pretty nice there, doesn't it? Not bad. Once again, eyes nice and sharp. Not bad for a kit lens, right? Not bad. Uh, I was taking some photos. I like those lights there a little bit. Kind of like that a little bit, that framing there a little bit, even though my hair is kind of in there. I can probably go there and fix it. I'll just do both. They're, they're both cool. So, yeah, I've got a pretty good bit of hits in this one. All right, I'll live with that. Something called wind that happens. And again, I would uh, encourage all you out there that are, you know, if you're a photographer, you take photos, and even right now during all this uh, coronavirus, you can still go out outside your house and uh, experiment a little bit. Uh, not bad. Kind of interesting. Probably should have shaved today. 
But yeah, I got some. Uh, whoops, I didn't want that. That's why I didn't want that one. All right, and let's. Well, what am, am I not doing this right? Export. Not bad. Right, let's see what we can do with that. That's kind of cool. And there was a couple of ones. I mean, even that's kind of a cool looking photo there where I'm just looking. I don't know what I'm looking. Looking at something. I think a car must have gone by or something. A little vignette there. Kind of interesting. Yeah, it's kind of cool. So you can kind of see my process of uh, doing this. I took a class on <laughs> digital photography. And I didn't realize the class mainly was going to be on using Lightroom. So... I guess that's cool. Yeah, not bad. Let's see if we can make it look a little better. Like some of these might be really cool, black and white. Let's right, stick with color right now. Some crazy hair going on. Can't get a haircut during the coronavirus. Yeah, well, we'll do one without the vignette. We'll make a make a preset without the vignette. I don't remember, I don't remember where that's at. Oh, maybe it's a little, just a little bit. That's kind of cool. Oh, that one's actually kind of cool there. That's rock and roll. That's actually kind of a nice little hover floating type thing looking. So that's kind of cool. Don't be afraid to get your uh, clients to jump. Yeah, unfortunately, I run every day, so... No, that's pretty carefree there. That's kind of a cool shot. I'm even fingering the E chord there. Do the one like that. I'll do one with a vignette. Just because I think it might look kind of cool with a vignette too. Yeah. Uh, I might like this one even more than some of the other ones. Let's see if they got some cool. That 
landscape one looks kind of cool to me. I think I'm gonna go with that landscape one. Yeah, that's kind of nice. I don't know why that's screaming out to me, but it is for some reason. So, and a lot of times you do photos, you <laughs> the hair looks horrible on that one. Oh. Maybe that's that's kind of nice. They're just kind of just standing there. That's kind of that's something. I don't know what. Kind of a boring picture in some ways, but it kind of I like the framing of it for whatever reason. And it's easier. I almost never have anybody there to help hit the button for me. But if I if I, if I can have someone there hit the button, yeah, I'll enjoy that looks. So. Kind of fun to go through here and to see what pictures work and what pictures don't work. And I never really honestly thought about ever doing this. I don't, I don't hate that one. Not the greatest one, but I don't hate it. That looks pretty good for the one with the clouds. So I kind of put a vignette on that one. All right, I dig that. Ah, uh, that's happiness there. Look at that. That's being a rock star. That's what that's what rock that's what being a rock star is all about, right there. That's why I learned how to play guitar, is for a shot like that. Like, yes, I'm playing rock and roll. I'm a rock star, and I can fly in the air. That's a nice smile there. It's kind of, one thing jumping up, you got to kind of force yourself to smile. <laughs> so, for some reason, I think these look a better vignette. So, I'll just do that. Yeah, this actually took a took a day that was kind of dreary, and uh, you know, once again, at five six. I mean, a lot of times people don't like uh, shooting stuff at five six. You know, if you if you know how to frame your shots and know what to do, if you got some space back there, you can still make uh, focus in on that subject pretty well. Look at that. I mean, that's a that's a pretty cool looking photo. Let's have that one with a vignette. Play around with contrast just a touch. Mm. I kind of like that better when it just pops. Let's get rid of the highlights. All right. Yeah. Okay. I can live with that for right now. I'm not really editing the best, the best, and uh, I'm gonna kind of just get out there to kind of experiment at first. Uh, that look there, I, uh, that look there, I like. Okay, looks pretty much in focus. What's that? Forty-one, five, six. You know, sometimes you, when you're looking in other directions, it kind of gives you a cool. I mean, not a bad, not horrible, but I'm just you know looking at the camera at that point, and you know, nothing, nothing too excited with that one there. Uh, definitely the jump ones. For, I mean, for some reason that one there looks a little bit more interesting.
and all this is this with a kit lens. Right now, I, I looked on eBay before this, and you can find one of these for um, like 200 bucks. Um, obviously, there may be a whole lot of you know, there's only a certain shelf life they have for uh, the shutters on these, but um, for a lot of folks, I'm gonna I'm I don't even know how many photos I've shot all together um, on this on this camera a lot. And that's actually a little bit more interesting looking. I wish my foot wasn't out of there, but it's all it's almost it's almost in there. That's 18 millimeters, right? I mean, that's a, not a horrible photo. That's a 3.5. So you can see there's a little bit of barrel rolling there a little bit. But, uh, you know, we've got the, you can see without it, you know, with it. So it makes it a lot better. And when you shoot in raw, you have a little bit more, you know, uh, when I first got the T3i, I didn't I didn't know what RAW was, but shoot it. So I'm glad I learned about it because it makes my it makes my life a lot easier. Uh, it, that I know I got a couple of stops I can play around with if it's overexposed or underexposed. And uh, this is my first attempts to kind of get me jumping in the air. I don't <laughs> don't know why I'm about to explode there. That probably was a winning shot there. Uh, uh. I actually like that one more than anything else. I, mean, I can see that's the one that people like to like a lot, and uh, this one screams for black and white. That landscape, for some reason, just maybe punch. I know a lot of y'all probably go out there and make your own own ones, but that looks kind of raw. I don't know. I just like the landscape ones. I'm just gonna go with my gut. Let's take that. I guess at least get one of these and then I jump in the air just to, you know, bad hair day. You know, that happens every once in a while. If I get a haircut, solve that problem. Hopefully in a couple of months I'll be able to get a haircut. All right, well, that's uh, going through and editing some of those photos there and uh, on the T3i, and I uh, was kind of happy with a lot of the results of this as well. So, um, so once again, in 2020, uh, if all you have is $200 and uh, you can find one of these T3i's, a T4i, a T5i, a T6i, I can't remember if they go up to, to nine or whatever, but this screen here makes it a lot easier for if you want to make YouTube videos because uh, you can look at yourself like that. Um, you know, it uses an SD card, which is nice. You know, so you can just put an SD card in there. And these little kit lenses they they sell. Uh, you can find these used. I think I've, I think I've seen these as cheap as thirty bucks used, thirty five bucks used, and. Uh, um, I'll give you a tip for me. I used to put um, a UV filter on top of it to protect the lens. Let's just be honest. It's a kit lens. Go out there and shoot with it. And, I'll, and I'll, a lot of times for me, it's glass. Glass is actually pretty relatively hard to scratch. And if it does, if you get a scratch in there, you, you're, you won't hardly notice it as well because, you know, it's a crop sensor and whatnot. So, um, you know, I've, I've, I've bought a lot of glass um, throughout the days. Um, you know, and they got scratches on them. You can't hardly notice it too much. So, yeah, that's how it looks when I take a photo. 
And uh, yeah, I love it. I love this Canon T3i. I use this as a backup camera for, for, for film. Uh, if I need a third camera, uh, that's a DSLR. And um, I've been really quite pleased with this camera there. So thank you again for watching. As always, rock and roll in the course of Desk Computer. If you like this type of amazing content, please subscribe to my YouTube channel because that would totally compute. Thank <music> you.